covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The month of March is designated as Scouts Month and the Scouts Association is celebrating its 105th anniversary with a series of events. Ricardo Lightborn will explain. Scouts have been in existence for 105 years and can boast of producing leaders and productive citizens throughout the country. The Scouts Association will celebrate Scouts Month on Grand Bahama and throughout the Bahamas under the theme, One Law, One Promise, One Family of Scouting. District Commissioner for Scouting, Reginald Dean, says the month of activities will focus on saving our young men. We have a lot of boys going astray. And every day, if you take a look at it, who is not going to jail, go into the grave. And you have five go to jail, one or two is going to the grave. What are the women in society going to do or have to go back to for men? We are trying to show people with mentoring a boy to become a man is. The Minister of Youth Sports and Culture is endorsing the Scouts Month and says the youth coordinator does call a brown roker. Now the month of activities will climax with the worship and fellowship March 25th at the New Life Worship Center with Senior Pastor Simeon Outen. We see deviant behavior and we're very concerned. The answer is to ensure that our young men are being enrolled in organizations like the Scouts that have been mentoring young men for so many years and can boast and brag about producing productive citizens, law-abiding citizens, and those with character and values in our country. New Life is a church that's loaded with young people, and it is our hope uh, by us hosting this service on the uh, as they bring their time of celebration to a close, some of the young people would be inspired um, to become a part of this wonderful organization that is doing their part in helping um, shape the minds and lives of our people here on the island of Grand Bahama. One Law, One Promise, One Family of Scouting is the theme for the month of March as Scouting celebrates 105 years. Ricardo Lightborn, Zenas Network News. And now to this creepy crawly story, a frightening discovery for a resident of the West as he came across a deadly spider that is usually found in North America. A black widow spider was recently found in the Eight Mile Rock community by resident Bernardo Francis. This spider features a red hourglass shape on its underside and has a tendency to eat their mates. Our ZNS News team reached out to Olympia Ferguson of Budget Pest Control, who confirmed that there have been sightings of the spider in the Freeport area in the past, but that this is the first to be reported from the West. The black widow spider is considered to be one of the most uh, dangerous uh, species of spiders in the U.S. simply because it has a little bit larger venomous glands than other spiders. It's also known to be 15 times more venomous than the rattlesnake, and but it isn't uh, very fatal to where it will kill a person with one bite. So it will usually inject just a tiny bit of venom, enough to kill the insect that it's going after or the prey that it's going after. But to a healthy human, it will just give you um, certain symptoms such as a muscle rigidity, vomiting, pain, those kinds of things. Now what is even scarier is the fact that if bitten, you may not even notice bite marks. But if you suspect that you have been bitten, she strongly suggests seeking medical attention. Ferguson says that children and the elderly are the most at risk to the effects of being bitten. You would definitely want to tell your children to be aware of any shiny black spiders with round abdomens. And if you see any red hourglass markings on the underside of these insects, to stay away from it, to not uh, go up to it, touch it, play around with it. Because usually children would tend to, you know, want to play around with things that they don't know exactly what they are. So black widow spiders are usually found in the outdoors. They're found in debris piles. They're found under stones. They're found in dense vegetation. And so in order to prevent a lot of black widow spider infestations in, around your home, we definitely want to advise people to remove any old vehicles, any old appliances, any old debris that you may have around your yard, and also to keep your grass cut short, and as well as having a regular uh, pest control treatment. Because whenever you get a pest inside your home, they're usually coming from your yard. The black widow spider eventually died while in captivity, but not before laying and hatching babies. 
Those babies were eventually destroyed. The ZNS Northern Serve is helping the community of Grand Bahama once again with its annual Healthy Lifestyles Initiative. During the month of March, the Northern Service focuses on various health programs. The health screenings kicked off today in the Harold and Gregory Complex on the Mall Drive and will be held every Wednesday during this month. Coordinator, Allison Smith. Doing the glucose, high blood pressure, weigh-ins, cholesterol, and um, we're encouraging the public to please come out and take advantage of all the um, complimentary screening done by the Public Hospital Authority. We're going to be here every Wednesday leading up to the um, actual event. So the next session would be Wednesday, March 14th, and again on Wednesday the 21st. The sessions begin at 10 a.m. The nurses come in and they leave at 2. Nurse Winifred Humes was a part of the medical team from the Grand Bahama Health Services conducting the health screenings. Sometimes a lot of persons only find out that they have they are hypertensive or they um, have a high glucose and probably were sent, referred to the hospital. So sometimes it's really good to um, have these things checked during the screening. I was here last year um, in partner with ZNS um, doing the screening so um, it's good for ZNS to really do this um, screening to help the community. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Welcome to Ask the Doctor. In keeping with this year's theme for World Health Day on March 8th, which is kidneys and women's health, include value and empower, I will discuss some reasons why developing CKD in women may be higher than in men. At least three major reasons are recognized so far. CKD progression is slower in women compared to men. Psychosocioeconomic barriers, such as lower disease awareness, lead to late or no start of dialysis among women and uneven access to care is a major issue in countries with no universal access to health care. Kidney transplantation is also unequally spread mostly due to social, cultural and psychological aspects. Even in some countries that provide kidney transplantation and equitable treatment for men and women, women tend more often to donate kidneys and are less likely to receive them. Coincidentally, World Kidney Day and the International Women's Day 2018 are commemorated on the same day, offering us the opportunity to reflect on the importance of women's health and specifically their kidney health. On its 13th anniversary, World Kidney Day promotes affordable and equitable access to health education, health care, and prevention for kidney disease for all women and girls in the world. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away, Ricardo Lightborn is up next with a check on sports. <laughs> 